Good day, class. Uh, welcome to Chapter 2, uh, The Nature and Effect of Obligations. Let's begin. So let's talk about Article 1163. Article 1163 provides that every person obliged to give something is also obliged to take care of it with the proper diligence of a good father of a family, unless the law or the stipulation of the parties required another standard of care. All right. So this is the standard uh, diligence that uh, that the obligor must uh, must have. All right. It's diligence. It's a proper diligence of a good father of a family. So a debtor should act as if uh, he is a good father of a family. All right. So that is the standard uh, diligence. Now the parties, can the parties dispense with this requirement? Yes, they can. Can the parties require a higher standard of care? Yes, they can. Also, the law sometimes provides a higher standard of care. So we will learn later on that uh, in the contract of carriage, for example, sumakay ka ng jeep, sumakay ka ng taxi, those are common carriers. All right? So iksabihin, pag sumakay ka ng tricycle, ng jeep, ng taxi, all right? So yung owner dapat nung ano, nung... Uh, ng taxi, ng jeep, ng tricycle na yon, you're entering into a contract with that person para dalhin ka sa place to your destination safely. Alright? So ano yung, ano yung uh, standard of care doon? The law provides that dapat extraordinary diligence. Okay? So paano pag na-accidente ka? No? Nakasakay ka sa jeep, sa tricycle. Sino pwede mo kasuhan? Pwede mo kasuhan yung operator ng jeep, ng taxi, o ng tricycle na yon, Because the operator did not exercise extraordinary diligence. But balikan natin to. No? The standard diligence is proper diligence of a good father of a family. Now let's talk about uh, specific and determinate things. Why do we have to know this? Why do we have to know the difference between a generic thing and a specific thing? It is, imp we, it is important to know this because uh, you know what happens to the obligation in case of loss of the thing. Now, for example, you obliged yourself to deliver um, five sacks of rice to, ano, to, your, to, your, to your friend. Tapos sa nangyari, parang ano, parang uh, binagyo, nasira yung, ano, nasira yung mga bigas mo. Are you still obliged? Are you still obliged to deliver five sacks of rice? Kahit na nasira ng ng bagyo yung yung rice mo the answer is it depends okay kasi kapag specific yung thing tapos na sira ng bagyo that's a fortuitous event then you are no longer liable pero kapag uh, generic thing yan you are still liable because generic things do not perish genus never perishes example pa ng generic uh, we will get to that later on okay and you know what happens to the obligation in case of fortuitous events. So what is a specific or determinate thing? A specific or determinate thing is something which is particularly designated or physically segregated among others of the same class. So ano example yan? The ball pen that I am holding right now. I am, I am uh, delivering this to you. So with my intention, I have made this a specific thing. All right? Kasi sabi ko, the ball pen that I am holding right now. So other examples, the watch I am wearing, the car I am pointing to right now. So it's the intention class, no? So I have made it a specific because of, uh, because of those overt acts. So sabi ko, the watch I am wearing, the car that I am, putting to, uh, that I am pointing to right now. Paano pag sinabi ko, uh, I will deliver to you uh, Toyota, uh, a red Toyota car. Is that specific or generic? That is still generic. Okay. So what is a generic or indeterminate thing? It refers only to a class or genus. It cannot be pointed out with particularity. Examples, a 2017 Toyota Altis, 545 pesos. Ito class, no? Money, money is always generic. Remember that. 
Okay? So if you are if you uh, obligated yourself to pay 1000 pesos to your to your friend. Okay? So tapos binaha yung bahay mo or whatever nilakawan ka, you are still you are still liable to pay that amount. Hindi excuse yung na hold up ka or whatever, no? Kasi money is always generic. iPhone 12 Pro, a golden retriever dog. Okay? So, tingnan din itong two, uh, 2017 Toyota Altis. Hindi ba to parang specific? He specified the year, he specified the make, etc. The answer is hindi pa rin. Kasi maraming 2017 Toyota Altis. Okay? Ibang usapan, kapag sinabi mo, 2017 Toyota Altis with plate number, blah, blah, blah. Pag ganun, it's already specific. Because there can only be one plate number for every vehicle, right? Every plate number has to be unique. So what are the duties of the debtor in obligation to give a determinate thing? Number one, it's to preserve the thing. All right? So kailangan ng diligence of a good father of a family. Uh, deliver the fruits of the thing. Deliver the accessions and accessories. Deliver the thing itself. And answer for damages in case of non-fulfillment or breach. Medyo discuss natin ako ito yung uh, number two. Deliver the fruits of the thing. What do we mean, what do we mean by fruits? Uh, for example, uh, you obliged yourself to, uh, to deliver your dog five days from now. Right? E kinabukasan, before matapos yung five days, nakanak yung aso mo. Who is entitled? Who is entitled to the puppy? Ikaw ba? Ikaw ba na debtor o yung creditor? The answer is the creditor. Alright? Kasi sabi dito, oh, deliver the fruits of the thing. Okay? Now the puppy is a fruit of the dog. That's a natural fruit of the dog. Okay? Uh, duties of debtor and obligation to give a generic thing. To deliver a thing which is of the quality intended by the parties, taking into consideration the purpose of the obligation and other circumstances, and to be liable in case of fraud, negligence, or delay in the performance of his obligation or contravention of the tenor thereof. We will discuss that more later on. What are the different kinds of fruits? We have natural fruits. And this is without intervention of human labor, like the young of animals, yung mga asong ng anak, yung mga, yung mga baka na ng anak, etc. Alright? Isa pang example ng natural fruits, yung mga puno no? na tumubo sa, ano, sa, sa soil na hindi tinanim ng, ano, ng, uh, ng workers. Alright? Then we have industrial fruits. These are produced by cultivation or labor. Yung mga, yung mga palay sa, ano, yung mga palay sa, sa, sa lupa, mga ganyan, no? We have uh, civil fruits, which are those derived by virtue of a juridical relation, such as the rents of buildings. So let's talk about the right of the creditor to the fruits. The creditor is entitled to the fruits of the thing to be delivered from the time the obligation to make delivery arises. This is to protect the creditor and to prevent intentional delay by the debtor. So balikan natin example natin kanina. For example, binibenta, binibili mo yung aso mo, uh, sorry, binibili mo yung aso sa kaibigan mo. Tapos, ang sabi ng kaibigan mo, sige, ibibenta ko sa ito. Uh, ibibenta ko sa iyo, pero uh, itideliver ko na lang kung kaya ko na. Alright? So, Ano nangyari? Nanganak yung aso. No? Eh yung, ano, yung seller, gusto niya makuha yung puppy. Hindi pwedeng ganun, class, no? So the creditor, the creditor is entitled to the fruits of the thing. Okay? So, from the time of perfection of the contract until the until delivery, so yung fruits nun, yung creditor, yung entitled doon. Okay? Laging lumalabas sa mga exams yan, no? As a general rule, the obligation to deliver arises from the time of perfection of the contract, from the birth of the contract or meeting of the minds of the parties. All right? 
if a subject to a suspensive condition or period, it arises from the fulfillment of the condition or arrival of the period. We will discuss more about uh, period and condition in the later chapters. In a contract of sale, it arises from perfection of the contract even if it is subject to a suspensive condition or period as long as the price has been paid. Now let's talk about uh, personal right versus real right. All right. So on personal right, this is the right of the creditor, uh, which is the active subject, to demand from the debtor or the passive subject the fulfillment of the latter's obligation to give, to do, or not to do. There is a definite active subject and a definite passive subject. This is binding or enforceable only against a particular person. So class, no? Itong third na, ano, itong thir itong third na enumeration dito, uh, this is very important, no? This is only against a particular person. Okay? Anong sabihin niyan? For example, merong, merong may utang sa'yo. No? So ano yung merong ang right sa kanya? You only have a personal right against that person. Okay? So there is an active subject which is ikaw, no? Ikaw yung nagpautang, so ikaw yung maniningil. Tapos yung pina, yung pinautangan mo, siya yung passive subject, siya yung kakasuhan mo. So what you have is a personal right against that person. Okay? So that is a personal right class. All right? It's against a specific person only. Ngayon naman, ano yung difference niya sa real right? Let's go to the next slide. A real right, this is a right or interest of a person over a specific thing. So we have ownership, possession, or mortgage. There is no definite passive subject. It is directed against the whole world. So anong, uh, ano, anong, uh, anong maganda example yan? Ito, ito ownership. All right? So kung meron kang titulo dun sa lupa mo, kung meron kang titulo dun sa lupa mo, it is directed against the whole world. You have a real right over that property. Okay? So, pwede mong ibenta yan, pwede mong ipalis yan, pwede mong ipayusufruct, etc. So, ito yung real right class, no? Uh, there is no definite passive subject. It is directed against the whole world. In yung main difference niya sa personal right. A personal right, it is uh, the right is only uh, directed against a specific person. Ang real right, it is directed against the whole world. Buong mundo. So yung ownership mo sa bahay mo, you have a real right over that. Okay? Now let's talk about uh, the remedies of creditor in real obligation. So what is a real obligation? A real obligation is the obligation to give. Right? Ano yung obligation to do? That is a personal obligation. Pero ito muna ang real obligation. Okay? So sabi ba dito, specific real obligation. A specific real obligation, this is the obligation to, to deliver a determinate thing. So we already know what a determinate thing is, right? Ang determinate thing at saka specific thing, pareho lang. Okay? So ang remedies demand specific performance. What is specific performance? Pag sinabing specific performance, Parang you're, you are, uh, parang you're, you're uh, demanding that the person uh, perform, perform the act. Uh, so, no? so kapag uh, in a specific real obligation, you are demanding that the person give to you the object. Okay? So demand specific, uh, specific performance with right to damages or demand rescission or cancellation in certain cases with right to damages or demand payment for damages only, well, it is the only feasible remedy. Okay? Let's say, ano, let's say nasira na yung, ano, let's say, nawala na yung thing. No? Tapos, hindi na posibleng mabigay. No? Payment of damages na lang. Okay? So, these are the three remedies no, in a specific real obligation. Now, what are the remedies of the creditor in a real obligation? Now, in a generic real obligation. So, obligation to deliver a generic thing. So, it is to demand specific performance, parang yung kanina, with right to damages or demand rescission or cancellation in certain cases with right to damages or 
it can you uh, you can demand that the third person perform this for you but of course you can uh, demand uh, yung yung cost ito has to be shouldered by the person who failed to fulfill his obligation all right now let's talk about accessions and accessories so what are accessions accessions are fruits of a thing or additions to or improvements upon a thing so take note class now these are additions or improvements hindi sila sobrang kailangan for the principal thing to function all right it is not necessary to the principal thing so example ito house or trees on a land so you may have land okay you may have land all right tapos may mga house or trees doon isa pang isa, uh, example rents of a building air conditioner in a car uh, air conditioner kailangan ba to sa kotse the answer is no all right uh, andar yung kotse mo kahit walang aircon uh, profits or dividends accruing from shares of stocks now, what are accessories no? accessories these are things joined to or included with the principal thing for the latter's embellishment, better use, or completion. The accessory and principal must uh, go together. Uh, both can exist only in relation to the principal. So examples, key of a house. So kung magbenta ka ng bahay, dapat kasama yung susi. All right? The accessory follows the principal. Does the principal follow the, the accessory? The answer is no. But the accessory always follows the principal. Ulitin, uh, ulitin ko class, no? The accessory follows the principal. The accessory uh, follows the principal, but the principal does not always follow the accessory. Okay? A frame of a picture, bracelet of a watch, machinery in a factory, and bow of a violin. Alright? So, kung nagbenta ka ng violin, dapat kasama rin yung bow doon. So the general rule, all accessions and accessories are considered included in the obligation to deliver a determinate thing, although they are not mentioned. So kahit hindi pag-usapan yan, no? let's say nagbebenta ka ng kotse, hindi naman pwede na hindi mo isama yung susi because paano mo papaanda rin yung kotse? Paano pag susi lang binibili mo? Dapat ba kasama na agad yung bahay or yung kotse? That's Chris, no. All right? So the accessory follows the principal. However, unless otherwise stipulated, an obligation to deliver the, access, uh, the accessions and accessories of a thing does not include the obligation to deliver the principal. Okay? Article 1167. If a person obliged to do something, fails to do it, the same shall be executed at his cost. The same rule shall be observed if he does, not, if he does it in contravention of the tenor of the obligation. Furthermore, it may be decreed that what has been poorly done be undone. All right? So, for example, uh, class, no? you obligated yourself to paint the house of your neighbor. Eh, tiyatamad ka, hindi mo ginawa. No? Pwede ka ba kasuhan para gawin yung, ano? para gawin yung, uh, para i-paint yung uh, bahay nung, ano? nung, nung kumantrata sa'yo? Yes, pwede ka kasuhan. But can the court order you, can the court order you to paint the house yourself? The answer is no. The court cannot do that. Kasi bawal sa atin ang involuntary servitude. Kasi kung ayaw mo, huwag mo gawin. Okay lang. But you have to answer for it. So how, how will you answer for it? So ang gagawin ng friend mo, pwede siya mag-hire ng isang pangkontrata, pero ikaw ang magbabayad ng gastos na yun, plus damages. Pag sinabi natin damages, a payment of money, no? additional payment of money. Alright? for breach of obligation those are damages so yung class no so kapag hindi maaari hindi ka pwedeng utusan ng korte na gawin yon but mananagot ka doon you have to pay for the, the you have to pay for the cost and plus damages okay pero paano pa pag sa obligation to give can the court actually order you to give yes the court can do that but yung obligation to do can the court order you to do the answer is no. Pag to give, pwede. Okay? 
eh, ang pagbabayad ng pera. That's an obligation to give. So, pwede ka pilit ng korte na magbayad. So, situations contemplated in Article 1167. Number one, the debtor fails to perform an obligation to do or the debtor performs an obligation to do but contrary to the terms thereof or the debtor performs an obligation to do but in poor manner. Oh, let's say na nangontrata ka na gumawa ng bahay pero pangit yung gawa po. You will be liable for that. No? Lalo na pag uh, hindi, hindi tama dun sa pinag-usapan. No? You will be liable for that. So what are the remedies of the creditor? What are the remedies of the creditor in positive personal obligation? So klas ito, napag-usapan natin, positive personal obligation. So ang iba ang personal uh, obligation is obligation to do, right? Ang positive personal obligation, this is to do. An obligation to do. Ang negative personal obligation, obligation not to do. Okay? So pag-usapan natin itong positive personal obligation. If the debtor fails to comply with his obligation to do, the creditor has the right, number one, to have the obligation performed by himself or by another unless personal considerations are involved at the debtor's expense. All right? And uh, okay, uh, to recover damages. So pipili dito yung debtor. Uh, sorry, pipili dito yung, uh, yung creditor kung anong mas gusto niya. Kung damages na lang, okay, uh, ipagawa niya sa third person yung, ano, yung uh, obligation Pero ano, pero uh, sa expense pa rin ng debtor, syempre. Eh, ang sinasabi dito, class, no? Uh, ito, pag-usapan muna natin itong first uh, asterisk. Okay? A specific performance cannot be ordered in a personal obligation because this amounts to involuntary servitude, which is prohibited by the Constitution. Okay? We will discuss the, the said uh, constitutional provision in the next uh, slide. Pero class, no? for example, what if what if uh, ikaw, no? let's say, birthday mo. Ang ginawa mo, hinire mo yung sikat na singer. Sino mga sikat na singer ngayon? Kunwari, si David Pormerans. Hinire mo. I don't know if you know David Pormerans or what. No? But for example lang, no? uh, hinire mo siya. All right? Magaling kumata si David Pormerans. Uh, he has his original uh, love songs. All right? Ngayon, hindi siya tumupad sa usapan. Wala siya. Hindi siya sumipot. Can you hire a different singer? No, class, no? Uh, the, the thing here is, the thing here is, singer yan eh. I mean, your guests are expecting that person. Alright? Or let's say, magpa-concert ka, tapos yun ang kinuha mo, tapos hindi pala pwede. Mag-hire ka ba na kung sino-sino lang agad? Pag ganyan, sa ganyang situation, kasuha mo na lang for damages. Alright? Kasi, Kasi kung uh, kaya mo siya pinili, eh dahil, dahil talagang gusto mo siya, iba siya yung let's say nakontrata ka para ipagawa yung bahay mo. Alright? Kasi ang daming pwedeng contractors na pwedeng gumawa ng bahay mo. So pag ganun, pwede ka mag-hire ng isa pang contractor. Tapos ang pagbabayarin mo, yung hindi tumupad sa usapan, yung debtor. Okay? Pero pag dito, for example, ang kontrata mo kay David Parmanant, for example, 1 million pesos. Tapos, Tapos hindi siya sumipot. Ngayon, ang ginawa mo, hinire mo yung kapitbahay mo na tingin mo magaling na singer. Ang singil niya, 1 million pesos din. No? Tapos pwede bang, ano, pwede bang si David Portman sa pagbayarin mo doon? That, that would be weird, right? Pangit siguro yung example ko. But anyway, no? uh, David Portman is a good singer. So, uh, so yun, no? So, Pag, pag ganun class, no, the only remedy is payment of uh, damages na lang. Alright? Because personal qualifications of the debtor are the determining motive for the obligation. Pero kung hindi naman, you can let the obligation be done by a third person and then uh, you can ask for damages and the cost from the debtor. Okay? So let's talk about the Philippine Constitution, no? So by the way, class, no? The Constitution is the highest law of the land, alright? Hindi pa ding gumawa ng patas ang Congress na na hindi alin sunod sa Constitution, okay? 
uh, you can find our Bill of Rights in Article 3 of the Constitution. As in sa si Section 18, no? uh, Section 18, Paragraph 2, no involuntary servitude in any form shall exist except as a punishment for a crime uh, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted. So there can be no involuntary servitude. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin, oh, may utang ka sa akin, pagtrabaho ka sa akin. Pagbayaran mo yung utang mo. Hindi pwede yun. Alright? Unless pumayag yung tao, of course. Pero hindi mo pwedeng pilitin yung tao na magtrabaho sa'yo. Kung ayaw niya. Alright? Hindi rin pwede mag, uh, mag-direct ang court na ano, na oh, may utang ka sa kanya. Kasi mag-servisyo ka sa kanya. Hugasan mo yung mga pinggan niya. Hugasan mo yung kotse niya. Hindi pwede yun. Uh, now, no? Uh, uh, exception dito is kapag may ginawang crime yung person, tapos ang uh, penalty sa kanya is, uh, for example, community service. So that is the only exception. Pwede ka utusan ng korte na mag-community uh, service as punishment for a crime you did. Yun lang. Uh, so what are the remedies of uh, credit card in a negative personal obligation? Undoing of the forbidden thing plus damages at the expense of the debtor. So, uh, ano example ng negative personal obligation? Yung huwag kang magtatayo ng fence dun sa property mo. Or uh, that, that's the example in the book. No? A specific performance cannot be ordered in a personal obligation because this amounts to involuntary servitude. O yun pa rin naman. So, pag ganyan, pwede iuto sa iba. Alright, pwede iuto sa iba. Tapos, uh, ikaw, ikaw yung mananagot sa cost. Yung debtor yung mananagot sa cost. Okay? Plus damages. Now, let's talk about delay. Uh, let's distinguish between ordinary delay and legal delay. Alright? Uh, legal delay is also called uh, default or mora. Ordinary delay is mere failure to perform an obligation on time. Legal delay or default or mora this is failure to perform an obligation on time, which failure constitutes a breach of the obligation. Oh, for example, class, umuta ka sa classmate mo. Sabi mo sa classmate mo, o oh, sige, uusapan natin, babayaran kita 10 days from now. Babayaran kita 1,000 pesos. No? Tapos babayaran kita 10 days from now, which is, uh, for example, January 10, 2022. So, gumawa ka pa ng note, no? may kontrata kayo. Sabi mo, I promise to pay you uh, 1,000 pesos on January on or before January 10, 2022. Now the time came. On January 11, na, hindi ka pa nagbabayad. Are you already in delay? The answer is no. Alright? You are not in legal delay. Okay? The general rule is no demand, no delay. Alright? So paano magkumuha ng demand, no? You have to, ano, you have to go to court. The answer is no. You can write a demand letter. Ito class, no? A demand letter dapat. Pwede sa text. Basta may, ano, basta, basta you have to make sure na natanggap yan nung, uh, ano, nung, nung debtor. Okay? So, when you write a demand letter, you have to be stern. It doesn't pay to be polite in this case. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin, please pay me the amount of ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. You have to put in the words, I demand that you pay the amount of 1,000 pesos. Yan, yan, no? You have to use uh, strong words. Kasi otherwise, kung medyo polite ka pa, I'm not telling you to be impolite, no? but you have to use uh, stern words when you write a demand letter. What are the kinds of delay or default? We have uh, mora solvendi. So this is delay on the part of the debtor to fulfill his obligation to give or to do. All right? That is uh, mora solvendi. What is mora accipiendi? Mora accipiendi, this is delay on the part of the uh, creditor to accept the performance of the obligation. Pwede ba ito? Yung, yung, uh, yung creditor, yung delayed? Yes, pwede. Bakit ito? Ha? Ito mong isip yung class, no? Bakit naman madedelay ang creditor, e babayaran na nga siya? Ginagawa yun ng ibang creditor's class. Bakit? Para dire-direct siya yung bayad ng interest. No? Ayaw na natanggapin yung ano yung bayad mo para dire-direct yung interest mo. Para lalong lumaki yung utang mo. I mean, that's one very common reason. Alright? 
ni naman we have a uh, compensation more. Uh, it's delay of the obligors in a in a reciprocal obligation. So both parties are in delay. Okay? What is a reciprocal obligation class, no? A reciprocal obligation, a perfect example of this is a contract of sale. Okay? Uh, both of the parties are debtors and creditors of each other. Kung tayo sa side ng buyer, kung ikaw yung buyer, what is your obligation? As a debtor, you are obliged to pay the price. Right? Ngayon naman as creditor, the buyer is entitled to what? The buyer is entitled to delivery of the thing he or she is buying. Now, if you are the seller, what is your obligation? Your obligation is to deliver the thing being sold. Now, as a, credit, as a creditor, what are you entitled to? As a uh, creditor, the seller is entitled to the payment of the price. Babayaran siya. All right? So, ang sinasabi sa compensation more, no? Let's say, no, let's say walang ginagawa yung, ano, yung buyer at saka seller. And there is no delay. All right? There is no actionable default on the part of both parties. Let's say, ang sabi, let's say, nasa palengke ka. Ang sabi mo, pabili nga pong kalaman si 10 kilos. Tapos, nagtitingin na lang kayo na seller. You think, you think one of the, uh, you think, uh, there is delay? There is delay in the transaction? The answer is no. Hindi, hindi kayo pwede mong kasuhan. Pero parang pag ganito, let's say nasa palengke ka, sabi mo, pabili nga pong kalaman si 10 kilos na sinaabot mo yung pera mo. Alright? Sinaabot mo yung pera mo, pero yung, ano, yung uh, nagbibenta ng kalaman si, ayaw ka pansinin. Can that person be in default? Yung uh, nagbibenta? Argu arguably, yes. No? Kasi you're ready and willing to perform your no your uh, your your uh, obligation by yung seller hindi no assuming na willing talaga siya magbenta sa iyo ha yung seller So in that case kapag merong uh, indication on the part of one of the parties na, na na he is ready and willing to perform his or her obligation delay on the other begins Okay kundi sila nagkikibuan walang delay sa part na yon uh, there is no delay in a negative personal obligation. Uh, what are the requisites of delay or default by the debtor? Uh, three conditions uh, must be present. Number one, failure of the debtor to perform his positive obligation on the date agreed upon. All right. Number two, demand made by the, uh, by the creditor, not mere reminder or notice. It may be judicial, there can be a complaint filed in court or extrajudicial. Ang pag sinabi ng extra, no, extrajudicial, it's mean outside the court. Extrajudicial, made outside of court, orally or in writing. But ito kasi, no, pag orally kasi, how will you prove that in court? That's very hard. Ide-deny lang yun ang debtor, di ba? So para sigurado ko, it has to be uh, in writing. Tapos dapat may deceive, no? Dapat pirmato ng, uh, ano yan, ng, uh, ng uh, debtor yan. But, for classroom purposes, ang sabi, orally or in writing, pwede. There must be a demand made first no, by the creditor. Again, no general rule, no demand, no delay. So kahit lang pas sa date na pag-usapan mo, kapag, wala ka namang, kapag walang ginagawang demand yung creditor, hindi pa rin in delay yung debtor. And then the number three, there is failure of the debtor to comply with such demand. The uh, creditor has the burden to prove that demand has been made. So let's talk about uh, mora solvendi, effects of delay. No? So in a mora solvendi or delay on the part of the debtor, the debtor is guilty of breach or violation of the obligation. He is liable to the uh, creditor for interest uh, in, on obligation to pay money or damages from the date of demand. Again, class, no, the, always remember the general rule, no demand, no delay. The debtor is liable even for fortuitous events if he is in, in delay when the obligation is to deliver a determinate thing. So ito, class, no? Uh, later, pag-usapan natin ng fortuitous event. Ano bang fortuitous event? For example, bagyo, or flooding, or fire, no? Anything which uh, which is not for uh, no which is not foreseen. Typically, ito yung mga natural calamities or pwedeng robbery and yan. 
So example ito, no? Uh, for example, nagpa-deliver ka ng ano, nagpa-deliver ka ng uh, ng kotse, no? Kotse with plate number etc etc. So it's a specific thing, no? Now, um nagpapa-deliver ka ng kotse, bumili ka, binili mo yung kotse ng yon. Ano nangyari? Uh, let's say ang date of delivery is five days from now, kunwari. Ngayon, uh, six days na, hindi pa nade-deliver yung kotse. Alright? Tapos, nag-fortuitous event, nasira yung kotse. Is, is the debtor liable to you? The answer is no. Alright? Kahit lampas na dun sa date na pinag-usapan nyo. Bakit? Kasi wala ka namang ginagawang demand eh. Alright? Ayan. What if, hindi ba ang usapan nyo, deliver five days from now? What if on the fourth day, what if on the fourth day, na si, uh, ano, uh, nawala yung kotse? Let's say, ano, let's say, nagka-fortuitous event. Kunwari, nanakaw, ganyan. Is the debtor liable to you? The answer is no pa rin. No, kasi before naman the agreed due date eh. Okay? Ayan, what if, on the sixth day, nagsulat ka ng demand letter dun sa ano sa debtor. Tapos yung debtor hindi pa rin siya sumunod, no? Tapos on the 8th day nagka fortuitous event, is the debtor liable to you? The answer is yes. No? Kasi kasi the debtor is already in delay kasi nagdemand na yung creditor. If the debtor is already in delay, no? Kahit mawala yung bagay by virtue of a fortuitous event, the debtor is still liable. That's a very that's very important class, no? You can rewind this video if you want. Now, in an obligation to deliver a generic thing, the debtor is not relieved from liability for loss due to a fortuitous event since he can still be compelled to deliver a thing of the same kind. So for example, same example, no, pero in this na culture ang pinapadeliver mo, kunwari, pera. May ano, may... Uh, Pero nagpa-utang ka ng pera tapos babayaran ka, no? What if class? What if uh same example yung I will pay you 5 days from now, no? Same example, let's say on the 6th day on the 6th day uh, ang usapan 5 days from now tapos babayaran ka ng 1 million pesos. On the 6th day, nagkaroon ng fortuitous event dun sa bahay ng uh, debtor. Let's say nasunog yung bahay niya. Tapos sabi niya, teka pare, hindi na kita mabayaran. Is the debtor relieved from liability? The answer is no. Ang ginawa mo, gumawa ka ng demand letter, no? Gumawa ka ng demand letter na, ano, na para maging in delay siya. Pero, on the, on the eighth day, na, ano, na, na nasira yung bahay niya, wala siyang pambahayad. Is the debtor still liable to you? The answer is yes. Okay? Because money is a generic thing. Kahit, masunuga, kahit masunog yung pera niya mismo, etc., etc., liable pa rin siya. Okay? Liable pa rin siya because money is always generic. Alas ang usapan niyo, of course, yung, yung, yung specific na pera na yan mismo, yung tinuturo mo, yun yung indigay sa'yo. Pero that would be weird, right? Money is money. Kaya malutong yan o crumpled or etc. Basta it's, in, uh, it's legal tender, it's in circulation, okay lang yan. Money is money. Okay. So in a mora accipiendi, a delay on the part of the creditor, the creditor is guilty of breach of the obligation. He is liable for damages suffered, if any, by the debtor. The creditor bears the risk of loss of the thing due. All right? Where the obligation is to pay money, the debtor is not liable for interest from the time of creditor's delay. And the debtor may release himself from the obligation by the consignation or deposit in court of the thing or some due. Now, class, this is very important. No? We, uh, we, we learned uh, an important word here, which is consignation. Ano ba ang consignation? For example, merong, ano, mer merong kang utang, no? tapos gusto mo nang bayaran. Ang, ginag ang ginagawa ng creditor, pinagtataguan ka. Bakit? No? Kasi pwede ano, pa, gusto niya matuloy yung interest mo, ganyan-ganyan. So pag ganyan, what will you do? you will consign the money or the object in court para matigil yung interest, para makonsider na bayad ka na. That's what you will do. You will consign the object in court. Alright? 
Hindi pwedeng sabihin, teka, ano, hinarap kita, pero ayaw mong pakita, eh, kaya hindi na kita babayaran. Hindi pwedeng ganun. Okay? You will consign the object in court. Uh, in compensation more, delay of the obligor cancels the delay of the obligee and vice versa. Uh, there is no default or delay on the part of both parties. So, nagka-cancel out, no? Kasi both of the parties are in delay. So, in general rule class na no, no demand, no delay, there are exceptions. Ibig sabihin, kahit walang demand, may delay pa rin. Alright? So, let's talk about these exceptions. When demand is not necessary to put the debtor in delay. Number one, when the obligation so provides. Okay? So, kung pinag-usapan nyo, for example, may uh, uutang ka, Usually sa banko class, ganito matalino ang mga banko. Yung mga nagpapautang. No? Ang nakasulat sa kontrata nyo, uh, so you will be, uh, you, you, are, you will oblige yourself to pay on this date without need of demand. Alright? Pag meron ganun, without need of demand. So magiging in-delay ka kahit hindi sila gumawa ng demand letter. Alright? Kasi may merong wording na ganun. Pero kung wala yung wording na ganun, then Pabalik tayo sa general rule. No demand, no delay. So kapag uutang kayo, class, no? kapag uutang kayo, you have to be careful. You have to read the contract. Okay? Tapos kung kayo, yung, yung, kung kayo naman yung magpapautang, I will advise you to put, the, put in this wording. So uh, without need of demand, uh, parang, uh, parang I promise to, uh, dapat ang ilagay mo doon sa kontrata, you will, uh, you will oblige yourself to pay uh, within 10 days from today or at this particular date without need of demand. Tapos mayroong interest na whatever, whatever. Right? So you have to put in that wording kapag kayo yung magpapautang. Kasi kung wala yan, the general rule, no? no demand, no delay. Number two, when the law so provides, example ito, uh, payment of taxes. All right? So, there are particular dates. May, may deadlines sa payment of taxes. Pag hindi ka nagbayad dyan, hindi kailangan na mag-demand letter pa ang gobyerno sa'yo, ang BIR. No? So, you are automatically in delay pag hindi ka nakapagbayad ng taxes on time. Number three, when time is of the essence. Ano example nito? Example yan, uh, for example, may wedding ka, tapos nag-order ka ng wedding gown or wedding, uh, or wedding cake. Alright? Tapos, Malapit na yung wedding mo, wala pa yung wedding count. Wala pa yung uh, wedding cake. Dapat ba gumawa ka pa ng demand letter doon? Hindi na. Because because you entered into uh, into the contract specifically, no? Uh, na dapat ready na yon by your wedding day. Uh, example, uh, example pa niyan, mga birthday cake or birthday noodles, whatever. No? Because time is obviously of the essence. Ano yun pa yung birthday cake kapag tapos na yung birthday? No? Number four, when demand would be useless. Oh, for example, uh, for example, ang, uh, ang obligation mo is to deliver your horse to the creditor. And dahil sa kapabayaan mo, namatay yung kabayo, namatay yung horse. Okay na ba? Dapat mag pa ng demand letter yung, ano, yung creditor? The answer is no. Because demand is uh, useless already. You are already uh, liable for damages. Number five, when there is performance by a party in a reciprocal obligation. Yung example natin kanina sa contract of sale, no? Let's say, ano, let's say, uh, nasa palengke ka, may bibili ka ng kalamansi, inabot mo na yung bayad. Ayaw tanggapin ng seller. That seller is already in belief. Okay? Uh, balik na rin natin. Yung seller, inabot na sa yung kalamansi. Ikaw, ayaw mo magbayad. You are already in delay. Hindi naman pwede na gumawa pa ng demand letter yung, ano, yung, yung seller sa'yo. Alright? So let's talk about them uh, one by one. No? When the obligation so provides. So add stipulation without need of any demand. Mere fixing of the period is not enough. Arrival of the period merely makes the obligation demandable. Okay. Where the law so provides, uh, expressly provided by law itself, examples, payment of taxes on the due date. 
Number three, when time is of the essence, time element is important as the performance itself. It is not necessary for the contract to explicitly state that time is of the essence. The intention is sufficient. Examples, delivery of wedding gown or wedding cake before wedding, delivery of balloons at a child's birthday party. Perform when demand would be useless. When object is lost through the debtor's negligence or when object is lost through a fortuitous event wherein debtor is still agreed to be liable. When there was prior absolute refusal by the debtor to perform on his obligation or when there has been a prior absolute refusal to comply with the obligation. So in that case, bakit pa mag-demand mag letter? Pag ano, automatic in delay na yung debtor kapag ganyan. Number five, when there is performance by a party in a reciprocal obligation. When one party fulfills or is ready to fulfill his obligation, delay by the other begins. Well, let's talk about grounds for liability for damages. So we have fraud, negligence, delay, which we discussed earlier, and contravention of the terms of the obligation. So uh, let's, just, uh, let's discuss these one by one. No? Itong fraud, there are two kinds. Uh, we will discuss that. No? Ano yung difference ng fraud and saka negligence? One particular, one particular, uh, one particular, qual uh, one particular difference here, class, is the intention. No? Fraud is intentional. Meron kang intention na mandaya. No? That is fraud. A negligence, there is no, ano, there is no uh, intention. No? There's no intention to be uh, negligent. Okay. So let's talk about fraud. A fraud is uh, deceit or dolo. Dolo is a uh, Latin. No? Uh, deliberate or intentional evasion of the normal fulfillment of the obligation. It implies some kind of malice or dishonesty. It does not cover cases of mistake and errors of judgment made in good faith. So pag fraud, lagi itong bad faith. No? Uh, it is uh, synonymous to bad faith. It involves a design to mislead or deceive another. Manluloko. And here, class, now these are very important statements. Waiver of an action for future fraud is void. Okay? You cannot enter into a contract to sabihin mo, ay pare, ano, uh, let's enter into a contract. Tapos, pag lulukohin kita in the future, dapat okay lang sa'yo, ha? Hindi pwedeng ganun. Okay? So that is a void contract. Hindi pwede. Waiver of an action for past fraud is valid. Okay? So pwede yung pag-usapan na yung mga nangyari nung nakaraan, tapos na, okay na yun. So okay lang yun. Pero yung future fraud, hindi pwede. Waiver of future negligence is valid. Ang example niyan, um, magde-deliver ako ng eggs. Magde-deliver ako ng eggs bukas. Kung meron mga mabasag man dahil sa kapabayaan, sana okay lang sa'yo. Yun, pwede yun. Okay? That's a valid contract. Alright? Pero yung ano, yung uh, sabihin mo, I will deliver you 10 eggs, uh, 10, uh, eggs tomorrow. Pero pag nakawin ko yung, ano, pag nakawin ko yung uh, ibang itlog, okay lang dapat sa'yo. Hindi pwedeng ganun. That is a void contract. Alright? So, waiver of uh, waiver of action for future fraud is void. Hindi pwede. Waiver of an action for past fraud is pwede. Kasi past, okay lang. Waiver of uh, future negligence is valid. Okay lang. Paano yung past negligence? Hindi syempre valid din. Now let's talk about uh, the, there are two kinds of fraud. No? We have causal fraud, which is dolo causante, and we have incidental fraud, which is dolo incidente. Now, causal fraud or dolo causante. This is fraud in inducement of the contract. Uh, this is fraud to get consent of the other party. Fraud is employed to vitiate consent. Remedy is annulment of the contract with damages. Class, no? take note of this. Annulment. Pag sinaming annulment, ano to? Ipagpapawalang visa yung kontrata. 
Alright? Kasi naloko eh. Parang, parang napa-oo siya ng hindi dapat. Example, if B bought uh, the 20 bottles of wine on the false representation of S, that the wine is that as represented by the labels. Without the fraud committed, B would not have given his consent. So ito magandang example yan, class. No? Sabi mo, eh ano, bilhin mo tong ano, bilhin mo tong uh, sing-sing. Gold ito. Alright, pinakita mo dun sa tao. Gold to, itong sing-sing na to. Tapos no, yung tao, tinignan niya, akala niya gold nga, so binili niya. Is that causal fraud? That is causal fraud, yes. So ano yung remedy ng ano, buyer na yun? His remedy is annulment. Okay? Kasi pag, hindi, pag walang fraud committed, Yung pala hindi gold yun. Yung pala parang ano lang, parang plastic lang or whatever. No? So pag ganyan, the remedy is ano? The remedy is annulment. Annulment with damages. Okay? Now let's talk incidental fraud. Uh, fraud committed in the performance of an obligation which is already existing because of, uh, of a valid contract. And here, the remedy is damages only. There can be no annulment of contract because there was no vitiation of consent. All right? Example, if S delivered 20 bottles knowing that they contain cheaper wine than that agreed upon. All right? So na, nakikita nyo class yung difference? For example, balik tayo sa sing-sing. No? Ang sabi mo, ang sabi mo, ito yung sing-sing, gold ito. Gold tong sing-sing na to. Tapos, Tapos ang nangyari, no? Ang nangyari, imbes na yun ang ibigay mong singsing, ang binigay mo iba, no? Kumbaga umuo siya dun sa singsing na binigay na ano na pinakita mo. Pero ang binigay mo sa kanya ibang singsing. Not the same kind. So pag ganun, that's only incidental fraud. All right? There was no vitiation of consent kasi pa siya dun sa singsing na pinapakita mo eh. Eh ibang singsing yung binigay mo. Okay? So that is incidental fraud. That's fraud in the performance. So I hope you see the difference class. No, that's very important. Kasi dun sa isa, sa causal fraud, sa dolo causante, pwede ang annulment. Dito sa dolo incidente, hindi pwede. Payment for damages lang dito sa incidental fraud or dolo incidente. Okay? Marami pa examples sa book, so please read your book. So let's talk about negligence. Uh, it is not a serious of it, it is not as serious as fraud. There is no deliberate intention to cause injury or damages. Uh, the person cannot recover twice for the same negligent act. So it can either be a criminal action or a civil action. So yung mga na-accidente class, no? let's say na nabangga ka, nabangga ka ng motor or ng kotse, pipili ka. Either you file a reckless imprudence, a criminal case, no, resulting to physical injuries, or kasama mo ng quasi-delict. Quasi-delict is a civil case for damages. So the general rule is, waiver of future negligence is valid except when the nature of the obligation requires the exercise of extraordinary diligence, such as transportation by common carriers. Again, what are common carriers? These are people who take in the riding public for a fee. Yung mga tricycle, yung mga taxi, yung mga jeep. All right? Hindi pwedeng sabihin ng tricycle uh, sa'yo na ah, pag ma-accidente tayo, dapat okay lang sa'yo. Hindi pwedeng ganun. Alright? Because under the law, they are required to uh, exercise extraordinary diligence. Okay? So pwede mo kasuhan yung may-ari. Let's say pasahero ka. Kung pasahero ka ng jeep tapos na aksidente yun dahil pabaya yung jeep ni driver, pwede mong ano, liable dyan yung, ano, yung uh, operator ng jeep ni. Okay? Because you are entering into a contract with the jeepney operator, not with the jeepney driver. Kung yung jeepney driver ay yung operator din, kung isang tao lang yun, hindi liable yung tao yun. Kinds of negligence according to source of obligation. We have contractual negligence or culpa contractual. We have civil negligence or culpa akiliana. We have criminal negligence, which is uh, culpa criminal. So these are Latin, no? Let's, uh, discuss, uh, let's discuss these one by one. So let's talk about culpa contractual. Negligence in fulfillment of a pre-existing obligation. 
the negligence uh, in contracts resulting in their breach. It is not a source of obligation. The law makes the debtor liable for damages because of his negligence in the fulfillment of the obligation. Remedy is payment of damages. Example, if S entered into a contract of sale with B to deliver a specific horse on a certain day and the horse died through the negligence of S. All right? So there's a pre-existing of... Uh, there's a pre-existing obligation, no? which is which is the sale of the horse, the, the delivery of the horse. All right. Liability of a common carrier to injured passengers when the vehicle driver is negligent. So class, no? so the operator of a common carrier is supposed to ensure your safety. Okay. So dapat pipili siya ng mga driver, ng mga, ng mga galing, ng mga ayos, ng mga professional drivers. Hindi pwede kung sino-sino lang. Now, what is uh, civil negligence or culpa akiliana? There is no pre-existing contractual relation between the parties. Uh, negligence and contracts resulting in their breach. The negligence itself is a, contra is a, is a source of obligation. Actually, this is a parang quasi-delict. No? Also called quasi-delicts or torts. The remedy is payment of damages. In the textbook, assuming the horse is owned and possessed by B, the negligence of S, which results in injury of the horse, will make him liable for culpa akilana. So kung pabaya, no? Kung, kung basta wala namang intention, kung, kung merong intention, kung merong intention na saktan talaga yung kabayo, that's already a crime, no? Pero kung wala naman, let's say pabaya siya. He, he, the person does not know what he is doing. No? That is culpa akilana. Assuming na yung kabayo ng kapitbahay mo ay na, ay, uh, na parang ano, para aksidente, ay na ano, naging negligent ka, nasaktan mo yung kabayo, that's cool pa akilyana. Isa pang example nito, yung sa paso, no? yung merong paso, yun ang napag-usapan natin dati, merong paso na dahil pabaya ka, iniwan mo doon, nahulog, may tinama ang tao, that's cool pa akilyana. Liability of a bus driver to other cars and pedestrians, he or she hit on the road if he or she was driving negligently. Let me ask you, class. Kasi this, this always happens. No? Let's say, ikaw, pasahero ka, tapos na-accidente kayo kasi pabayan driver. Sino pwede mo kasuhan? Pwede mo kasuhan yung may-ari ng bus, yung operator ng bus. Ang pag ikaw naman, naglalakad ka, hindi ka pasahero, naglalakad ka sa kalye, tapos uh, may may negligent na bus driver na sagasahan ka ng bus, sino pwede mo kasuhan? Is it the bus operator? The answer is no. Alright? Nakakasuhan mo yung driver. May pipili ka. It's either, uh, it's either reckless imprudence, which is a crime, or, or civil negligence. Pipili ka either criminal case or civil case. Pero hindi mo pwede kasuhan. Hindi mo pwede kasuhan yung, ano, yung uh, operator. No? Unless, maraming pang certain exceptions, pero pang law school na yun. Right? Unless mapatunayan mo na pabaya yung operator sa pagpili ng mga ano, sa pagpili ng mga drivers. Pero that's a far shot, no? Usually it's just the ride. It's the, it's just the driver yung pwede mo kasuhan. Now, criminal negligence or culpa criminal. Negligence resulting in commission of a crime, such as reckless imprudence. The aggrieved party may choose between criminal action or civil action. What will you pick, class, kung ikaw yung magkakaso? Ang dami na nagsasabi, criminal, ano, criminal, uh, uh, criminal case na pipiliin nila. Well, pwede rin naman, no? Kasi may merong imprisonment yan. But, take note. Pag, uh, pag criminal case, what is the quantum of evidence needed? Dapat proof beyond reasonable doubt. No? Na, proof beyond reasonable doubt na, ano, na dapat Ibig sabihin nito, dapat uh, meron ka lahat ng ebidensya. Kung kulang ebidensya mo, pwede kang patalo. Kasi pag civil case, pag civil case naman, pag, uh, pag civil negligence, pag culpa akilyana, preponderance of evidence. Paparami mo lang evidence mo. Pero pag criminal case, proof beyond reasonable doubt. Anyway, you cannot recover twice. Reckless imprudence resulting to damage to property, uh, slight physical injuries, less serious physical injuries, or serious physical injuries, or homicide pag namatay. Okay? Paano kapag, oh, sige, paano kapag uh, may kotse ka? Let's say yung bus driver, sige. Makita niyo yung kaaway niya. 
Tapos nakita niya kaaway niya sa kalye. Ginawa niya, sinagasaan talaga niya. Ano kasi yun? Is that reckless impudence? The answer is no. Kung meron na intention na patayin yung taong yun, tapos talaga walang kalaman, that is already murder. Okay? Now let's talk about fortuitous events, class. A fortuitous event is any event which cannot be foreseen or which, though foreseen, is inevitable. Hindi may iwasan. Like bagyo. Hindi mo iwasan ang bagyo. Or it can, it can be impossible to foresee or avoid. It is independent of the will of the debtor. Wala control lang debtor dito. Makes the normal fulfillment of the obligation impossible. It includes acts of man, such as war, fire, murder, insurrection, etc. It also includes acts of God, such, uh, such as earthquake, flood, rain, shipwreck, lightning, eruption of volcano, etc. You can name all the all the natural calamities. No? Meron pa tornado, pero wala naman tornado sa Philippines. No? What are the requisites of a fortuitous event to exempt the debtor or obligor from liability? So, ang sinasabi dito, all must concur to exempt the debtor from liability. Alright? So, this is very important class. No? Kasi kung, ano, kung wala dito, kung wala dito, liable pa rin yung debtor. Okay? Number one, the event must be independent of the human will or at least of the debtor's will. The event could not be foreseen or if foreseen is inevitable. The event must be of such a character as to render it impossible for the debtor to comply with his obligation in a normal manner. Number four, the debtor must be free from any participation in or the aggra aggravation of, of the injury to the creditor that is, there is no concurrent negligence on his part. So, this is from the case of uh, Nakpil. Uh, Nakpil uh, versus, uh, in the case of Nakpil, no? Si Nakpil, Nakpil is an architect. He's a very well-renowned architect, actually. Ano nangyari? Gumawa ng building si, uh, gumawa ng building ang Nakpil, no? Uh, ano nangyari? Yung ginawang building, pangit. Dahil pangit yung pagkagawa sa building, nung, nung nag-earthquake, Nag-iba yung building. Alright? So, ang sabi ng debtor, Teka, bakit ako mananagod siya? Eh, ano, nag-earthquake. So, nag-iba. Ano sabi ng Supreme Court? Teka muna, before you can use the earthquake as an excuse, pag-usapan muna natin, maayos pa yung paggawa mo sa building. Kasi kung pangit naman talaga, liable ka pa rin. Alright? So, ang sinasabi dito, class, no? For the debtor to use the fortuitous event as an excuse, He has to ensure that uh, itong mga apat na requirements na to, pasok dapat. Okay? Kasi kung medyo pabaya din yung debtor, kahit merong, kahit merong fortuitous event, liable pa rin siya. Okay? So the general rule, fortuitous events will exempt an obligor or debtor from liability. So that's important class, no? Exceptions. When expressly provided by law. such as when the debtor is guilty of fraud, negligence, or delay, and contravention of the tenor of the obligation. So in these four cases, fraud, negligence, delay, and contravention, kahit meron fortuitous events, liable pa rin ang debtor. When the debtor has promised to deliver the same specific thing to two or more persons who do not have the same interest. For example, a double sale, itong si, ano, itong si debtor. Kahit mag-fortuitous event, Liable pa rin siya. Number three, when the obligation to deliver a specific thing arises from a crime, oh, liable pa rin siya. When the thing to, to be delivered is generic. Right? Pag generic yung thing, liable pa rin siya because genus never perishes. All right? Generic things do not perish. Such as uh, payment of uh, sum of money. No? Hindi mo pwede sabihin, teka, binahalat ng pera ko. Kaya wala na dapat ang utang sa'yo. Hindi pwede yun. Alright? Because money is a generic thing. Number two, when declared by stipulation of the parties. O pwede yan. Pwede yung pag-usapan ng mga parties. O maging liable ka pa rin kahit magkaroon tayo ng fortuitous events. Ha? O pwede yun. Number three, when the nature of the obligation requires the assumption of risk, such as insurance contracts. Uh, the very reason kaya ka nag-insurance contract eh, para kung merong fortuitous event, eh, ma-compensate ma ka. Alright? 
So that's it, class. Uh, thank you for listening. We will discuss Chapter 3 in the next video. Take care and God bless. Good day.